All right, so this is Juno through the houses. I have the Juno through the signs video. I'll link it. So Juno is the marriage asteroid. Um, you know, there's a whole myth around Juno and I described it better in my Juno through the signs video. This is just a quick follow up. So Juno, I say significant partner. So in the work that I do for people, I understand not everybody wants to get married. Not everybody, you know, that's not always a part of people's plan, but some people do. And again, we can appreciate whatever decisions people make. They're not hurting anybody. And also, um, but some people just make sure that you're aligned with your partner. <laughs> they want to get married, but you don't, or they don't, you do. That's, that's, that's a whole different situation there. But point being is that with Juno, I say significant partner because some people are like, I don't want to get married, but I still want a meaningful relationship. So that's what I say. But again, obviously if somebody's married, I interpret it as that or such. But the thing is that Juno is the sign is the type of energy the person brings. It doesn't always have to mean they are that sign. Whereas Juno in the house, giving you more of an understanding of what area of life should this Juno energy ideally impact. Juno can bring this to you. That's the thing about Juno. It's bringing you something, okay? It's bringing you a new awareness of a relationship. That's why sometimes you can have people who are attracted to one thing, but that's not really what they need. And attraction is important in a relationship, so I would never say, you know, if that's important to you, go for it. But I'm just saying sometimes that's why some people are not happy is because what you really need and everybody's needs are different. You're not going for what you need. Maybe society is telling you date this, be with this type of person, but you have... You need somebody more caring and nurturing. You need a genuine cancer person. But society tells you to go for this type of person. But you actually need some, you know. So it, it all depends on the individual. So let's jump into it. So again, Juno in the house is the area it can it can mostly um, impact the relate the relationship. Now you want to look at now a relationship can sometimes mean different things for people in the same exact relationship. So you also want to look at what your partner's Juno sign is in their house. And does that make any aspects to yours? So Juno in the first house would bring some type of awareness to understanding who you are um, in, as an individual, right? This relationship, this person should ideally give you a sense of freedom. Um, maybe it's not always a situation where you have a person who's very devoted to um, trying to be a power couple type of thing. So it might be you need somebody who helps you um, understand the importance of freedom and self-expression in a relationship. Like how do you still get to be yourself and still be in a relationship? Because some people really struggle with that. They become the other person. They don't know how to be like, this is who I am in a relationship and there's you and this is our relationship, but I'm still me. Some people don't know how to do that. Now, could you have negative aspects and you could have a person who over identifies with the relationship based on the Juno situation sure you could um but in general when you have Juno in the first house they help enhance your sense of self now it can be that they give you a little bit of a self-esteem booster there can be indicators of that um you also can have Juno in the first house where um you know part of some people's identity has been lifted because of their relationship maybe the relationship helps you feel more comfortable with yourself um, because of certain things that they accept about you now it doesn't always have to mean so just because a person can help you with confidence doesn't mean that you can't still be a complete person it doesn't mean um that you know you're codependent but sometimes people come around and they do help us feel better about ourselves or kind of enhance who we are or that might be that person that's like you're great at this you should do this thing and the relationship helps you in other areas of your life so Juno isn't just about the relationship if you look at it because it can't be if it's in all these other houses right Juno is showing what the relationship's potential is what does it teach you what does it show you what does it give you it's like a gift what is the type of relationship now all your relationships are not a Juno relationship get what I'm saying that's the ideal partner that can give you these things right um so this is you know you see long-term relationships relationships that feel more people are in sync it's usually a Juno type of connection look at their Juno sign that can t tell you a lot uh, Juno placements. So the Juno in the first house again helps assert your identity. Whatever it is, the relationship either let helps you, allows you to be independent. It doesn't stifle you. It doesn't try to control you. It lets you be independent. And it kind of this this relationship can sometimes give you a sense of um confidence, a confidence boost in some way, shape or form. Maybe gives you the confidence to do something. Um, but the Juno in first house, you know, in some people again, it depends on the aspect. Yeah, maybe it could be. The person is known through their relationship in some way, shape, or form. But in general, the first house Juno placement is gifting. It's able to give you a sense of independence and still being able to assert who you are. Because for some people, that's super important. Some people don't want relationships because they're afraid 
that this person's going to control them or they can't be who they are or they can't you know um you know show certain aspects of themselves so if you have a june on the first house um of course you need to make sure that the person accepts you for who you are um if they're trying to change you that's probably going to not be a really good fit for anybody but definitely june on the first house because you're you know there's an energy there of needing to especially if you have placements there if you have mars in the first house you have venus if you have anything in the first house and juno this person has to understand that your identity and who you are is important to you and that you need a certain level of freedom and a certain level of um allowing you to just you know be authentically yourself um they're gonna have to understand they might not even always come first okay it depends on the individual the juno in the second house has to do with resources um to this relationship is typically financially supportive. It doesn't mean it's only a financial type of relationship, but it means there's some type of financial support. There's some type of grounding. They come together. Maybe you brought your resources together. Um, maybe there's someone who maybe has more, but either way, it has something to do with being steady, having you know financial security, bringing together some sense of... Um, you know unity when it comes to feeling stable as a partnership so money foundation growing building accumulating resources is a part of the second house juno relationship again we can have you can have all the love in the world but if you have a second house juno there is something financial there is some type of benefit maybe um there is some type of resources pulling together or building up this could be the couple that build up a lot when they first met they were living in a studio apartment cool they could have stayed there but they said no we don't want to do that but they stayed there for a long time and then they moved up and now they're where they want to be you know and when i give examples i simply say what's the tendency of what people want if that's what's if the couple wants to live where they are forever that's fine that's cool that's your business um, but i'm just giving an example here before people say like well why can't they do that you can do whatever you want <laughs> that's nothing to do with me all right all right um do you know the third house is okay so there's some air er, uh, area there of communication of um the relationship has some type of grounding when it comes to their communication with each other their ability to talk to each other their ability to think and be able to be really candid um so it's going to be really important with the juno in the, in the third house person is the experience that you had has to do with the ability for you to feel connected to them through words um so sometimes the area of life that's going to be the most affected is th this love of words um this is where you can see a person where your juno sign your juno placement can indicate more the type of relationship and person that you probably want to seek out it's a little bit more transparent i think than juno in the second because i think juno second is transparent but when you put it in the third house now we're talking about which you, you the communication factor and the learning factor juno in the third house is like there's an anchor there to your ability to communicate and it's not just communicating you learn from each other so you juno in the third house you might be a person that likes to learn from your partner like you enjoy that you enjoy your partner giving you curious, making you curious, making you think a little bit more. And so sometimes you'll see the Juno house can also give some indicators because you might be lost. You might say, well, I understand my Juno sign, but the house, well, you have to also look at the experience that you've been having in these relationships. The house tells you the experience that you need, the experience that's going to make you feel more comfortable with relationships in the first place. Now, the Juno person is not who you have to always stay with forever. You know that juno type of relationship you might leave for other reasons but it has shown and taught you something and for some folks yes if juno has certain indicators to the south node or any other placements yes you can have like a karmic situation going on there but the juno in the third house yes if you have had relationships with a person is a poor communicator they're not good at communicating they don't tell you things they don't show you things they don't make you curious that's probably not gonna that's not gonna satisfy you if you've juno in the third house you have to start thinking a little bit more about you know the mind and which that connection so if you've always went for oh they just look good that can sometimes be the reason why you don't feel connected to the actual relationship because once the once the facade is over it's like what's really there and you're going to be really annoyed when you feel like there's not a mental stimulation this person's not on the same wavelength as you um some of you sometimes can meet your person in um education fields not education fields but um during education like if you're some people do you know third during if they went to college or graduate school or in any type of situation that requires you to come together with other people to learn if you have a June on the fourth house, um, there's a tendency to be connected to people who are similar to you because the fourth house can be connected to hometown where you're from. And so there's usually going to be 
to this ideal partner, there's some similarity. There's something, maybe you were raised the same way. Maybe you're from the same place or you have the same background, same ethnicity or whatever the case may be. And so typically with that um, Juno placement, um, there's a need for some reason. And especially if your chart, you have other chart placements of the fourth in the fourth house, any moon aspects, um, any cancer energy in the chart, there is going to be a, a desire to be close to what you're used to. There's going to feel more comfort there. Now that can come somewhere or someone who has um, Venus and Aquarius somewhere or whatever the case may be, but they are um, so they're experimenting with different people or they like different types of people or they're interested in those types of relationships, but they have Juno in the fourth house. So when they go to settle down, it's probably going to be someone more similar to maybe it's more similar to them. Um, it's probably going to be someone who makes them feel like home, gives them a reminder of home, even though they have these other placements is what I'm the example I'm trying to give there. Um, yeah, but Juno in the fourth house, again, the area of life, family, home, you probably should have shared understandings of home, what it looks like this person might value home, value family in the same way in which you do or that you might need to. Juno in the fifth house, this, um, you know, you could meet them in a social event, something entertaining, fifth house can be related to entertainment, um, you know, social um, situation you can meet them in um, or some place where you are showing, you know, a place where you come, people come together to show their talents. Sometimes, you know, you can meet people in any type of venue in that way um, or simply the Juno in the fifth house is that you enjoy, you know, this person's fun loving. Um, maybe you've had experience in life. Some people have had traumatic situations in their upbringing and they're like, it was serious. Um, it was a lot of control in the household. It was a lot of maybe abuse or trauma and everything. They weren't allowed to express themselves. And, and you might go through life thinking that's how you have to handle emotions. But if you have Juno in the fifth house, and especially if you have anything else in the fifth house, maybe that's not the case for you. Your par ideal partner allows you to express joy. Your ideal partner understands joy. They give you that outlet that you deserve in order to understand how to authentically showcase your love or your appreciation, your excitement and your joy. And so that Juno person, again, you might be attracted. People are attracted to what they saw growing up a lot of times, like even when it's not a good situation. So what sometimes you need to have happen is look at the Juno sign because it's actually going to show you the type of relationship you probably need not just what you want and some people get lucky they have Ju they might have juno and the moon conjunct or they have juno and mars or juno and venus so they have some type of indicator there of whoever they're attracted to has um you know has those qualities that they're looking for and what they need all right so when juno is in the sixth house you have to see where there's going to be indicators of having a really efficient relationship one that flows one in which there's kind of an understanding of each other's schedules or organization. So a lot of times people get into relationships and they have completely different styles of doing things. Even like, you wake up at this time. I wake up at this time. Um, I do things this way. I do things this way. But with the Juno relationship, the Juno in the sixth house, there's usually more of an understanding and awareness and appreciation for each other. Because remember, Juno was linked to this idea of union. And so when we think back to the fact that it's dealing with union, we're looking at where there's opportunities there to be unionized and to be on the same page. And so the Juno and Sixth House relationship is more so an understanding of each other's, um, you know, ability to organize their own life. You understand their style. You understand what they like, what they don't like. You're really even more attentive to what your partner does and what your partner's um, lifestyle is like. You know, I think that's what I'm trying to say. When you have Juno in the sixth house, we're dealing with work, we're dealing with everyday life. So this relationship makes each other's lives easier. It makes each other's lives flow a little bit better. I feel like that's all that, all of those, all of that is possible with the Earth Junos, the Earth Junos. It somehow makes your relationship function makes your life function a little bit better because of that relationship. So Juno in the sixth house, you sometimes can have somebody that maybe they came into your life and they helped you organize your life. They showed you the importance of being on time. I mean, I know this sounds like counterproductive. No, some people don't. No, some people need that influence. And it doesn't mean they stay in that relationship forever, but maybe that relationship helped them understand the importance of, hey, we should organize this or we should figure this out or why don't we sit down and look at our bills together or why don't, you know, why don't you try to do this? They also might give you, it's like a Juno and Virgo type of energy, but the sixth house, it's more so it's organizing the areas of your life. It's functional. It's not just giving you suggestions. It's not just the type of person, but the sixth house Juno is somehow, it's it helps make your life um, 
you're on the same page. It could be a partnership where you see people, you see two married couples and you're like, these guys have a organ they have a schedule, they're organized. You pick the kids up, I pick the I take them to school, you take them here, I do this, you do that. And they have more of their roles. There's roles within the six house Juno relationship that usually makes it work well. Whereas when you have people who don't have that, where it's like they're arguing about who picks the kids up. They're arguing about who put the dishes here and there. But and I know the Juno in six doesn't sound as spicy as some of the other houses but actually earth can make your life easier it functions it flows it takes away that chaos that unpredictability factor it makes things a little bit better it makes things flow it's about improvement so the relationship in itself is an act of improvement of constantly trying to make things better in some way do you know in the seventh house well of course i mean juno is going to thrive in the seventh or eighth house because the myth the juno um you know the mythology behind all of it and the information and the knowledge behind all of it has to do it links to libra and scorpio so this i said in my other video like libra and scorpio you can see juno really str you know strong there so when we look at the seventh house um so juno in the seventh house there's a true understanding of partnership but in the way in which it's going to be more magnified. So I did go over Juno and Libra and what that meant for that Juno and Libra person. But when we put Juno in the seventh house in particular, no matter what the sign is, there's a need to be a partnership, be together. Um, and, and so this is where you're going to see influences. You get people that partner together. They, um, they have a business together, a relationship, but they're, they want to work together. This could be the people like, we quit our jobs so we can create this together. You know, you'll see those people on those like reality shows or like, you know, they're like, we quit our jobs so that we can, you know, I don't know, raise an ant farm or something weird. You know, these people make money off things. that's very niche, um, especially if you have somebody with Venus in the 10th house. Well, Venus or they Venus in Capricorn. Oh, they already want. And Saturn, the first they already want to be a power couple, maybe, maybe, maybe. Right. Um, again, I'm just making up stuff. I'm just making up examples um, of what that could look like. But um, you can have people that part. They want to come together. They want their relationship to not just be just on paper, but they want their relationship to truly feel like a partnership. And so these are people that have certain things they might do together. They're always going to maybe be um, traveling together or they like each other's company. Um, there might be more magnified desire to spend time with each other. Anytime you have Juno and Libra or Juno in the seventh house. Um, what else with these people? They just have a lot of joint things together, you know, a lot of joint things, um, a lot of joint, um, you know, you can have people, you know, sometimes you have to be the couples. This is, this is an aside. The people that have the joint Facebook accounts, it's like, um, but there's a, there's a partnership or they're known for their partnership. They're known for their partnership and their, um, relationship with each other. But the June on the seventh house has a great way also just being authentically understanding what the partnership is about. I feel like a lot of times in relationships, some people don't know what they're trying to accomplish. But when you see June on the seventh house, there's more of an awareness of like what they want. And when they need each other, well, if you, you would have to have certain placements, but sometimes you can have the Juno, if the aspects work out, these people truly come together and know they both want partnership. They already know right off the bat what they want. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out. But again, it really depends on other aspects in the chart because I think Juno 7th can be really beneficial. But again, you have to be entertaining the right people. That's, that's it. Juno doesn't mean, just because it's a positive Juno, that means when you get in the ideal relationship. It doesn't mean all the people before that that you've, you know, dated. So that's just something to keep in mind with Juno. Juno is not you. It is the relationship. It is the ideal relationship, okay? Now, Juno in the 8th house can deal with... This, 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 they want to grow together. They want to grow and evolve together, right? So we did talk about Juno in the second house. It has kind of like that same thing, but they're just trying to stay afloat. They're just trying to get resources. They're trying to keep their resources safe and secure when you have that Juno in the second house relationship. Juno in the eighth is like always trying to, to evolve, evolve as a couple. You know, this is the couple, like when you have Juno in the right situation, they move, they can move pretty quickly, you know, if they truly feel in, 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 the, in love. Um, and I know that we can look at Scorpio and say, well, Scorpio doesn't trust easily. So does Scorpio really move quickly or does eighth house energy move quickly? It does not unless it truly feels a connection. If that eighth house trusts, again, eighth house Scorpio energy is about decisions. They make decisions about what they feel. But when they make that decision, they can't change it. It's really hard to change that fixed energy. So when you have Juno in the eighth house, 
Yes, you can have people that are like, no, I'm ready. I'm all in. I'm ready for this relationship. And it can move and evolve because they want it to move to the next step. Well, okay, we're a couple. Well, what are we doing next? Or what are we doing here? Like there's a really serious need for commitment when we have the eighth house. It's not just companionship like the seventh house, Juno. The eighth house is I want us to be linked. And so sometimes with Juno, um, you know, indicators are the areas where you can meet this person. I mean, sometimes some people with Juno 8th house can meet a partner through a tragic or traumatic situation in their life or a hard time in their life emotionally because 8th house can deal with those types of topics. Um, so sometimes you can meet that person at that time when you need them the most. Again, especially if you have karmic aspects in the chart in some way. Juno, um, in the eighth house, you build up together resources. So the second house pulls the resources together. Maybe one person has more than the other. And Juno, somebody is benefiting financially from the other partner. If you're the Juno person, you might benefit from a partner financially. Let's say someone had Juno and Jupiter in the eighth house. Oh, it's a rat. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, I'm joking. You need to look at other stuff. But, you know, Juno in the eighth house, you know, there's a desire to accumulate from other from other people y'all always want to move forward you always want your relationship to evolve. oh we have this but now we need to do this but we're gonna it's like always wanting something to a next level relationship and that's why it's really important in these relationships to make sure that you are both um on the same page because when you have that type of intimacy i think that can make a couple really strong um because juno in the eighth house is also going to give topics it might sometimes make you more aware of certain intimate topics and feelings that you have that you did not have before. Um, and in this relationship, you could have more dedication to a relationship than even some other things in your life. Now, Juno in the ninth house, um, sometimes these people, you could find them through experiences. Ninth house is experience. In order to get knowledge, you have to get experience, right? Um, so Juno sometimes in the ninth house can give those experiences where maybe you meet the person away from, um, you know, through travel, through other people, through a situation where you were simply just trying to do something new um, by chance. These are the people that meet, meet someone by chance. Oh, by chance we just met. Or, oh, I was over here. I was traveling here and I met this person. Because um, Juno can sometimes give indicators of how you will meet this person or what point of your life. Like, what are you going through right now? Or what do you go through in your life in order to meet this person? For some people, it could be when you're going through a spiritual or... Um, a point in life where you're trying to establish what you believe what you think you're going you know you hear those people yeah i was going through a time in my life where i wasn't quite sure what i thought what i was or what i believed and then we met that's juno ninth house type of energy or sag energy so you could say um but you know um juno in the ninth house is definitely going to be somewhat there's an adventure to the relationship um it, it is different than this juno the second again i make examples in my work so that way people can understand it better okay so it's not going off topic it's making connections okay so people other people who watch to understand understand why i'm saying it so looking at the fact that the juno in the second house or the earth houses there's more of a need for stability or routine or accumulating something we're doing the ninth house i need to experience with you this needs to be fun you also need to be open-minded you need to be open to new experiences you need to be someone that's like yes we're always going to find ways it's these couples that you're like oh they just went and traveled here or they just went and did this activity together or they just went and did this together um or they just randomly said oh we're just gonna go to a museum today so juno in the ninth house it's about feeling inspired the relationship typically has to rest on feeling some level of um what's the word i usually say about ninth house or stimulation i say third house um but definitely mental activity you know feeling um excited feeling enthusiastic to experience life is what the juno ninth house relationship will be now look at the sign to see how that looks this juno and virgo well now it's a more mental stimulating thing right where mentally you're you know the the, the beliefs or the ideas you have have to be analyzed and the relationship might rest on those types of experiences there um you know um more mental or if you have um uh, juno and sagittarius i mean sagittarius wants to be in the ninth house that's wow y'all have to y'all you know you guys you guys are probably going to evolve um not like the eighth house evolves through resources or what it has or what's power but you're going to evolve through knowledge you're going to evolve through experience through understanding and knowing things in a deeper way because you actually went out and did it so it does depend on the juno sign juno in the ninth house experimental 
you know, they want to experiment. They want to go see. They want to see the truth. We don't want to sit here and read about it and watch a documentary. We need to go out. We're going to go out and see this. Or we're going to go try this. Or, hey, we decided for a month we're going to do this. That's that Juno and Ninth House relationship. Now, there's other aspects in the chart that can create a similar type of relationship, but that's not what this video is about. Juno in the 10th house, you know, sometimes you can meet this person through career or they have similar careers to you. Or there's some type of linkage there. Could mean just even like you met them through somebody you work with. Like typically with the Earth House Junos, there's some type of grounding to something, right? That's to do with finance, finances um, or some type of stability. So Juno in the 10th house, this is where you really, really can get the, te the kind of power couple type of dynamic. Doesn't always mean that you work in the same field, but there's sometimes there's equal levels of success or equal levels of wanting to have that success or having that ambition. Juno in the 10th house is... People can see the relationship as a goal. You can find people who want a relationship. Some people don't care. Some people want to be single and that's cool. But some people that want that relationship, that June on the 10th, they are always looking at it as a goal. And you really need somebody that has that same mindset because if you're a person that wants relationships and you crave that and you find someone who's kind of nonchalant, you're going to stick to anybody, right? So it's important if you have these, if you're June on the 10th or June on Capricorn or whatever, the thing is, it's not about they. It's not about necessarily the warm fuzzy stuff. The tenth house is goals. I see this as a goal. This would look good if I had this. I want people to see that I have this. There's a certain element there of Juno wanting, also wanting a respect, um, respectable partner. Sometimes when you have Juno now again, how deep can we go? Well, it depends on other placements. But I, this is the ideal partner. So sometimes that's why some people end up in relationships and they're not happy. And the person looks good on paper. And you're like, why'd you divorce that person? Oh, something was missing. They didn't have this thing. And that's the thing with people trying to control what other people want. Listen, people will walk away from something every day that you think is great because it's not fulfilling them. And that is why I think astrology is important because it shows you the missing pieces of it's, it's all the spiritual stuff as well. You sense it. You know that person looks good on paper, but somehow something doesn't sit well with your spirit. You know that. And so, you know, with all of these things, that is why it's important. So it's okay if somebody wants a relationship. If they're saying, you know, no, for me, it's important for me to have one. For me, it is a goal. If that person, that Juno and 10th house person believes that, that's fine. But again, I don't think it's anybody, right? The 10th house is about, it's ruled by Saturn. So Saturn knows what it wants. It knows what it's going for. So you could have a person who wants status, who wants a relationship that gives them status. And if that's what that person wants, that's within their right to want that. And on a lo lower level, it simply could be someone who wants a relationship that c it, it looks successful. They might be a person who's like, no, my parents were married for 40 years. I want to get married and I want to have a stable relationship. So sometimes the Juno and 10th house manifests that way, where it's a person who's like willing to work to make a relationship look really good. But again, if things can look good on the surface, you have to have to pay attention to what's going on inside. But that's sometimes what you can see with Juno in the 10th house. And that, what I'm really trying to get at is don't feel embarrassed like you know about that if, th if that's what you want if you care about status in a relationship if you care about those things and that matters to you that's fine you're not hurting anybody i don't see why we have to force everybody to value what we value um so there we go with that juno in the 11th house so uranus and saturn influence of the 11th house especially in the modern context um well the juno relationship there's it relies a lot on some of the social things going on as well the juno relationship with the 11th house is this more free thinking type of relationship um where also the juno and 11th house relationship you know you might meet them through friends you might meet them through something involving a gathering of other people that have similar ideas that's really what the 11th house is about if we want to bucket it it's like you know there are that's you know benefits to the 11th house because of your associations who you're around the more people you know the more opportunities you get the more different ideas you can get right through the 11th house there's usually going to be a need for social activity so if you're a juno and 11th house person um the relationship usually it, it, it's beyond you two um you might have shared friends or you might have social gatherings you know how some couples are very uh, introverted and they're like we stayed home together we don't really hang out with our friends that much. But when you have a Juno 11th house relationship, and especially if it's positively aspected, right? So positively aspected would mean there's some Juno trines going on, Juno um, conjunct, something like that, even a, even a sextile going on. 
where you kind of want the same things or you're able to kind of meet in the middle to get the same things. So when you put Juno in the 11th house and it's positive aspects to it, it could mean, you know, you, you both have similar views, similar friendship groups. Those things are important to you for some reason. Um, you have similar causes. It's kind of like, you know how some people in relationships, like we were drawn together because we both care about this. You know, for some people, um, it can simply be, you know, we, you know, we believe in sustainable living, you know, um, point being that typically these types of relationships, even if someone has Venus in 11th, is going to be built around that, that cause, that common link of we care about this. This is passionate to me. So those were just examples. All right. Y'all can do what you want to do. <laughs> find whatever you want to find important. I can't tell you what to do with that. Um, yes. So the Juno in the 12th house. Okay. So this one you can say is definitely the most um, karmic in some ways because it, it, it has to align. So I want people to understand with Juno. It has to line up. You can't just say, oh, I have Juno in the 12th house. So this could be a karmic relationship. So every relationship I have is karmic. And every person I date is going to have some type of spiritual meaning to me. No. That's why it's important to look. Now, I tell you, don't obsess over the chart. You have people too afraid to live life because they're obsessed over every partner's degree. And this conjuncts this. And are we going to be together? And they're too afraid to live life. And they sabotage their relationships because... You, don't, you have to understand with astrology, it can look different ways. It can look very different ways. You can't just say Mars and Cancer means this. So that means this person's this. You actually got to study the person to understand how the relationship is going to look. Okay. But anyway, point being, you have to look at the, what I'm trying to say with your Juno 12th house or any Juno, look at the aspects with the person to see if this is a karmic relationship or there's any indicators there. Juno the 12th house, there is a spiritual kind of feeling with this type of relationship and it really doesn't have to be explained. You know, um, you typically don't, you, you go through periods of time where you're not even really worried about a title or worried about things in that way because your relationship can go beyond the physical world's um, structures and the physical world's demands and so sometimes I feel like you can't really tell how much someone loves somebody by physical things sometimes you can you know obviously if you love someone you're not gonna see them struggle but I mean you can't say oh they gave you lots of diamonds they love you it's like you know that's not the Juno in the 12th house energy you're here for a pure true connection and it has to be a lot vulnerable it can't be like the eighth house I don't trust as much. We're going to get in. I have to trust you. are making that decision. It can't be like the fourth house of we from the same place. That's, you know, the 12th house is I'm going to just give you my love because it flows and because it is there and because I'm compassionate and because we have a connection to each other. And so you have to be really careful if you have anything in the 12th house, especially if you have Juno conjunct anything or well, maybe conjunct could be, you know, it's good for your expression of through the relationship. But I think if you have any squares, what can happen is false tendencies, false assumptions about relationships. If you have any squares to Juno, you know what I mean? Especially if someone had like Mer uh, Mercury square Juno, false assumptions, you know, or even the moon, false assumptions about connections. And so I think when you have that Juno in the 12th house, it can be anytime there's anything in the 12th house, there's a connection, there's a draw, there's a want. A desire to understand things in a purposeful way, in a meaningful way, and really appreciate things is 12th house. Appreciating something for its essence. But when you have this type of relationship asteroid here, it's important to really make sure that you are truly aligning with what the person is and not what you think they are or not what you simply want them to be. So I would say, but I think Juno and 12th can be great for karmic type of relationships. You have to go dig a little bit deeper and really understand if this is a real beneficial relationship because... There's a lot of karmics that are not here for you, right? Um, so there's difference. Karmic relationships can be, you know, obviously we talk like a karmic partner. But karmic anything can mean, you know, there's some type of destiny in you meeting this person. Now, I'm not going to go, I, have a, I used to do a little twin flame videos and stuff like that. I'm not even talking about this. But what I'm talking about is like, but I'm saying karmic, I mean, there is some type of reason why you've met this person. So I'm not diving into soulmates and twin flames and things right there now. But what I'm saying is it's important to know what type of person you are dealing with in order to accept them as your partner is what I really mean for the Juno and 12th house person. Um, understanding, you know, being aware of what it is that you truly want in this lifetime. Because anytime you have 12th house stuff, you, you kind of can have some baggage. And it's forcing you to contend with that baggage. And your south node, wherever that is, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, this is here. Yeah, you you get you have this here, but you're trying to get to there. So again, if you have any type of placement 
in the 12th house. I would definitely examine that or any of the water houses because that contains a lot of emotions. And when we're talking about relationships. A lot of times, you, you know, a lot of people, you know, can make decisions off of emotion and not off what's really there. But in general, I think when you find, when you are in tune with your spirituality, June on the 12th house person, you're going to, you're going to make good decisions usually anyway, if you're truly in tune with listening to your intuition and all those things. That's it for this Juno video. I don't want it to be too long. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you didn't watch the Juno through the signs video, I will link that below. So check that one out um, as well.